Town Finance Committee meeting of January 22nd. Uh, we're here to start reviewing some of the budgets tonight. It was started uh, at our last meeting with some. But tonight we have the library budget to go over. We have Deb Kern, the librarian, and John McGowan. And let's see, since you were here, we have had a new member. I guess you know Sue. I do know Sue. Hi, Sue. You know Sue. Hi there, Willie. Okay, you know the rest of us. Tony, Bernard, hi there. Did you do it? Okay. We can be, we can uh, be friends. We've all got copies of your budget requests that you've submitted. And as usual, we like to talk about any changes in it. And let's see, we've done a good job with the budgets on the front page. And the detail is on the other pages. And so, uh, because Sue is new, I'm happy to do this every time we have a new member. Would you explain this matching money and so forth? Sure. So, uh, in order for the library to be certified by the state, we have some requirements to meet. Um, because of the size of our town, we have to be open at least 15 hours a week and some evenings. So we um, exceed that. We're open 30 hours a week. Uh, also, we have our budget has to increase by 2.25 percent over three years. You average out three years, and it has to increase um, by that amount. If the town were to um, ask people to let level fund or decrease um, decrease across all departments, ours would have to be within the same percentage as all the other departments. And then our other big um, uh, requirement is that we have to spend between, in the past eight years, it's been, been between 15.6% and 19.5% of our budget on materials. They had, a, when we were in the um, recession, they did this accommodation where you could get a little less in state aid and um, by spending less on the materials. Um, they're taking that accommodation away as of FY20. Um, so if we are not certified by the state, what that means is residents of Northfield may not use other libraries. Their cards will not be honored in other libraries. And I can tell you I know that Greenfield, Amherst, the biggest libraries in our neighboring towns will will honor that um, and they won't let um, residents whose towns don't support the library um, use the, their facilities. So we've always tried mm -hmm. to come up with the money except when she said we had short times there and, and funds were short and uh, relied on the accommodation. Uh, Northfield has always been supportive last 17 years. We try. We try to keep it up. So, Okay. Yeah, you are all cry. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now, it uh, looks like on, uh, you're expecting the water bills to go up. Water yes, we did. Up. I believe we got that notification that it was did going you? up. Yeah, I think you went we up probably had it at the town building, too. I didn't see it myself, but oh, I've heard, heard about it in the paper. Yeah, okay. Um, the next is CWRs, that's going up. Yes, so uh, first I have to say, if you look at um, this year's budget, which was $5,175, and you'll see that our actual fee was 5793 yeah. I made an error in what I reported to you was the actual amount. Um, so that was my error. Um, it, yes, they, CW Mars has reconfigured how they're billing the towns. They had some additional fees for um, their electronic resources that are now mandatory. Oh, okay. So that's why. It won't jump like that again, uh, but they reconfigured. Okay. And then here's one that's going down. Uh, office supplies dropping by fifty dollars oh, from twelve fifty to twelve hundred. Trying to yeah. give a little. <laughs> and 
another one. Maintenance, maintenance, maintenance supplies supply. is down fifty dollars. Well, down fifty bucks there. Okay, so the net increase is one thousand six hundred fifty-four. Any questions the rest of you have as to what? She, on the next page, she's got the detail, the breakdown of how those accounts are spent. Is there anything uh, you want to explain about those? Um, well, I can go through. So um, uh, last year we did re ask and receive a thousand dollars for substitute for subs. Um, so I just cut that in half. Um, you know, I know this was a big increase from CWMR, so I was trying to whatever I could give back. Um, the electric, um, I, it, you can see from FY17, we were pretty close. Um, in FY18, you know, July through October was a very short period of time. So... Yeah. Um, for when these figures came out. From when, yeah. yeah. And <coughs> I remember reading in the paper that there was going to be a WEMCO rate increase. And it did go up. It did go up, yeah. so. Yeah. Should be yeah. Right. So I think we should be okay. We turn the lights off a lot, so. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I think they've got an increase, and I think there's been a possibility of an increase not being as much maybe as they had thought so so yeah okay. so I did not want to decrease that at all no no um, that's understandable the five the the um we did the increase by the water commission we talked about that already yes and, um that there would be um I would like to just uh, for a minute address the repair and maintenance, which at the time of this report was $396. We've had quite a bit of maintenance since October, including bullet holes in our front windows. Um, we had to clean the gutters because we had some roof leakage. So um, that $2,000 will be cutting it very close this year. You know, other years it's been absolutely fine as FY17. Yeah. Um, um, but this year it's going to be tight. Well, it holds just a drive by type of thing, I think. Who knows? Who knows? We reported it. Hmm. It was fortunately when we were closed. Yeah, that's lucky then. Okay. Um, I went down a little on postage. We're not uh, mailing out as many overdue notices now. Oh, that's good. <laughs> so. Or is it because you send email to them? Um, some are emails. A lot are emails, but, um, and a lot we're making phone calls. Oh, okay. So, okay. Trying to reduce that. Uh, CW Mars, we've talked about. Um, mm -hmm. Fuel. <coughs> at, look, in October we haven't spent any money, I can tell you. That's changed. We've made it up. That's good. And we are having some problems with our heat in the meeting room. Um, I noticed you commented was on it that too, Saturday. Yeah, and I'm not sure if Saturday at the program it was too hot or too cold because... I was comfortable, but I kept my ja a jacket on. So. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to call in the troops for this. Okay. Um, so... Um, Oh, I know. In, I made a note with the, the uh, materials um, because in FY17 it looks like we had 21.5, yeah. but that's because we transferred 2,000 from um, salary line. Okay. Um, All right. So you're going with the same amount, the 19.5, though, again this year? Yes. I see. Okay. Yeah. I see what you from before. Yeah. Okay. And if you um, look on the <coughs> second sheet, you will see that um, on the bottom, our materials expenditure requirement, if we were in 100% requirement uh, compliance, we'd have to spend $32,000. Okay. Um, which means that 19.5, um, the library has to come up with the balance of that. Um, 
This year we'll probably go with the 80% compliance. It will be the last time that we can do that. Okay. At the 25,688. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Bernie, you asked about the farm's library. This is where she puts that in, because that counts as the town spending toward libraries. Yes, it does. <clears throat> okay. And I, I, if you also notice on the second page, our CW marks assessment that our actual annual fee is $8,989. We get um, $2,200 from the Small Libraries and Network um, grant. Okay. From the state. We and used to get 2500 Then one year we got 1900 It has to do with the E... E... Q... Q... V... E... Yeah, equalize Yes. Yeah. E, yes. <coughs> How much we get. So it must have changed because we went from 1900 up to 2200 Oh. Okay. That's good. All right. And yeah, these other, on the next page, these, um, I think they lump together elevators for the town hall and the library. Yes, and that's evidently it. the others, the fire alarm and so forth, yeah. Okay. And, and one just for Sue's, um, when we put the elevator in, uh, we discussed with the town to put that in a town elevator budget. Mm -hmm. If that had been in our budget, we would then have to increase our material Materials, spending yeah. <clears throat> um, by, uh, so that would be about $4,000 a year. So we would have had to add almost another 20% in materials. So the town was gracious enough to put it under a town, in a town line. Hmm. So, okay. to accommodate for that. Any problems lately with the elevator? Uh, we did have a problem, but it resolved itself. Oh, no, the service okay. people had to come. Yes, it didn't resolve itself this time. Yes. Okay. It had to do with the, the power. There must have been a brownout because we're on three-leg power, and there must have been a brownout, and it knocked the elevator out. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Okay, so these are uh, from articles um, that was taken care of this year, so <clears throat> uh -huh. yes, So we're not asking for any warrant or any... Any money. articles this time? Right, and okay. you'll see that what we have left over from uh, climate control, which has been here since before my time. Okay. So, but there's, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Lois, to interrupt. I just read somewhere that there are some changes um, with the air conditioning the, that we may end up having to get a new the thing outside. What is it called? Compressor. Compressor. Okay. Thank you. There have been there are changes coming soon. I don't know if they're state or federal regulations. We may yeah. have to change. The compressor. Uh -huh. So I'm glad those monies are still there. Could okay. Be a potential change from the coolant to the freon to a more environmentally. Is that what it is? That yeah, potentially it's might be, be the issue because we, they've had to do that with automobiles. I assume they're probably now looking to do it for refrigeration and for other, you know, and <coughs> also for uh, climate control. I think that's what's coming on that issue is mm -hmm. that uh, they want a more environmentally friendly uh, coolant uh, right. in the. Uh, but I think that's an assumption, but I think that's what they're looking at. Yeah, I know some libraries have been discussing it online, mm -hmm. um, so yeah. just to be aware of that we may. Okay, so if they request, if these monies are uh, in a special article and they ask you to hold it over another year, that's what Basically, I keep them open unless I'm sure that they don't want them. Okay. I guess you want them then. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Any questions anybody has? Pretty straightforward. 
as usual. I think you're doing a great job there. Just because we have the, our fearless leader over here. Fearless. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I am fearless. I thought he fixed everything up there. He's anything not to let him near anything. <laughs> break. But it's we're done. The social center of the town. A lot of good programs go on. And yeah, uh, Matt's great doing a great oh, job. Super rad. Yeah. Yes, and you should all come over and see. We've restored uh, one of the rooms upstairs. We uh -huh. had a donation to restore it after good. the wall, um, the ceiling almost came tumbling down. So we're working on that. Good. Soon mm -hmm. there will be a portrait of John on the wall. <laughs> Why? Really? Yes, it's the trustees' room. We took down all the pictures except for the any photographs or portraits we had of trustees. He's gone over the fireplace. Yeah, I hold the record now. She tells me, right? How many years? How many years, years have oh. you been on? Forty-five years. How many? Forty-five. Forty-five. It's been a lot of elections. I had to vote. And, <laughs> That's and, and right. I had to vote three or four times every time to get elected. You know? And now look at you've got Lloyd. At the same time, you're up for like. Oh, Lloyd and I have this contest, and he's beat me the last two times by a couple votes. This oh, time, gee, that's... this time I'm going to have to go door to door to beat him. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I've had enough of that. Well, don't give up, John. Just keep hang, hanging in there. So. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you that's very good. much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Next is highways, cemeteries, trees. <coughs> He's here. All set, Tom. Next, we have the highway superintendent, Tom Walker, go over his budget, which includes tree work and cemetery work. So you know the routine that we go through for the changes. Uh, uh, there's only two, uh, actually three. I don't know if Willie got the memo out on the wages, but up, starting from the trees, keeping that level at the 10. Okay, um, I noticed that, well, see, I guess it depends. When Debbie prepared these, it was just, what, uh, November, was mm, it? Because you'd only yeah, but... spent... 1200 out of the 10,000 for this year. Yeah, I haven't spent much. can't do tree work in the winter. Right. And we so. got some coming up. Actually, they're supposed to be in to do some next week if the weather permits. We've got some trees that are die, have died off to take down. Sure. Okay. Um, and then... Uh, on the highway supers, I went up a little bit. This is due to the fact that every now and then, it depends on jobs that we have, we've been paying out to the COG extra to bid things over and above the procurement for the products for gravel, sand. That That's a normal, that's what we normally spend, uh, I think it's twenty-three or twenty-four hundred dollars on. But like we just went out for the snow plowing, they assisted on that. No, I'm not asking for a vehicle or anything this year, but we have in the past had them sometimes do the vehicle bidding, which puts us over the cap. That's why I up that line item on that. Just, just for the rest of you, the <clears throat> cog will charge. You get a certain amount for a fee, right? And then yeah, everything's yeah. different. If it's construction, <laughs> we talk to them and they'll give us a price if they were to bid it out for us. It's gone anywhere from $200. If it's a construction project that we have them bid out, it could be, I think I paid seven fifty one one year to have them help do yeah. something I think on South Mountain Road, I think for the ledge work and stuff. 
and that was like 700 or 750. It's reasonable. It's definitely reasonable for what yeah. they charge. It just hasn't reflected in my budget sure. over the years. Okay. <coughs> and a few of the other things, if I'm I'm keeping them the same, hopefully the the uh, seminars and stuff haven't changed in the past year. The cost to keep all our licenses that everybody needs between the hoisters and the flagging license and yeah. Okay. So um, that's I upped that a thousand from seventeen four to eighteen four. Yeah. Okay. And then the wages most generally without okay. figuring a cola or any of that. And then we had a meeting the other day and we were gonna switch the maintenance money. I didn't have the exact figure, so I put thirty seven thousand on mine. I don't know what that figure in the town hall line item. Thirty-seven four hundred two. So we drive that um, total wages to three three one zero five five. Oh wait a minute. So you're gonna move all of it into the highway? Is that what we're yep. saying? No. So the two forty three six fifty three you're changing. Am I right? Mm -hmm. To what? Two ninety three. Say that. Two ninety three. It's two ninety three. Excuse me. Yeah, two ninety three. What's it going to be? No. Three three one zero five five. Three three one zero five five. Okay, um, Willie has given me a memo that's going to the select board tomorrow night for their action. Basically, what you're talking about is <clears throat> taking the building maintenance person's wages and putting them under the highway department and the supervision and so forth. So that will be a policy that the select board has to make a decision on tomorrow night. So that figure includes that change. Yes. Okay. So basically it would still be a separate line, but it would be in this group. Is that how we're? Correct. So add a, add a new line to this group. No, because now the highway, not highway, excuse me, <laughs> building maintenance person is a separate line item. Well, it would be a separate subcategory is now, the way I'm hearing. This, yeah. Right. But take it out of that separate account that we have. Mm -hmm. So it would be part, it would be a line in this group. So it would end up still being under 422 when you look at the short report. Okay. But when you look at the long <clears throat> report, it would be a subcategory in here. That's what we want, right? That's what we talked about. Yeah, okay. So that'll be up to the select board to make the decision. Uh, they're going to be on their agenda for tomorrow night. Yes, it is. Okay. All right, Tom. And then and, uh, moving down to the highway bridges and rails, I would like to up that a little bit due to the fact of cost of asphalt. I think it's going to skyrocket this year again, unfortunately. Plus we have a couple jobs that could be substantial and I'm not sure exactly how much Chapter 90 will cover because a couple of them, I'm not sure if they're Chapter 90 roads yet or not. Okay. Um, now what happened last year because uh, <clears throat> there were transfers, a couple of transfers that we needed and we they were taken, you offered that they should come out of um, highway bridges and rails. Yeah. So, so there was quite a lot of money that was available. Yeah, I don't, Dre, I mean like, I think I was doing the, we, I was just going through bills today, I still have like $80,000 in there to get me through till June, of, the end of June of next year, of this year. Yeah. Now, and a lot of the times if one of these other ones happen to run short, I have a little bit in there. And last year, the big one was the overtime and stuff for the snow plowing that we went over. That was one of the yeah. bigger ones. So I ended up, Transfer. it wasn't that I didn't, I had <clears throat> already ordered gravel and I actually, it hadn't been delivered. So I postponed the gravel to be delivered that was purchased. It wasn't on our site yet, so I was able to stop it. Okay. Um, there really wasn't going to be anything left in it at the point we knew we were short. We had a shortfall, and rather than take funds from somewhere else, we moved it from there. Into the, yeah, okay. Uh, then, 
The big thing, One, is, I mean, the two ahead. of the major things are uh, asphalt and pipe. The the cost of of pipe or the the um, oils aggregates in them to yeah. make them. Yeah, good um, And up, well, for instance, by the golf course, we have a box culvert that's actually starting to cave in, and that road's questionable if it's a Chapter 90 eligible. But we have engineering, everything else that would have to go along with it that I'm working on now. So, okay, that's one reason for upping that. That could be a. I mean, honestly, that that would have to almost be done two separate years because the box culvert investment is probably going to be around three hundred thousand alone. That's a good sized project. Yeah, I'm hoping it's a chap. It's eligible for Chapter Ninety. Is what I'm actually hoping. For. Okay. Now, uh, well, we're going to keep going through this, but one time <clears throat> you ended up, uh, I just wonder how the winter is going so far, because one year we ran into the red on... Uh, yeah, right, right now we're roughly at about 42,000. Okay. As of, I, well, I just got sand last week and I got salt coming this week, so as of roughly the bills that I paid to this point were around forty two, forty three thousand dollars $43,000. Okay, who knows what it, what's going to be like. Hopefully it's better than it has been. <laughs> Ice is the, bit, the hardest. Yeah. And yeah. the cold weather, unfortunately, because we could treat ice 10 times a day and the, nothing penetrates. And then the, the sand blows off of it. Yeah. So we have to go back. So some roads were sanding four or five times a day. It's just, I mean, luckily it's a lot of it's melted. Yeah. The, the main ice, we had that big ice storm really hurt us earlier this year. But you get some, like today, that would be melting yeah. some and then freezes up tonight. Yeah. Black I mean, ice. the dirt roads, we actually had to sand today, too. So, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. because they still freeze up. Yeah. So. And then tonight, it's yeah. up to freeze, too. Yeah, it's cooling down now. It's down about 33. So. Take care of oh, golf roads yeah, so make she sure, can get yeah, home. Make sure that one's all sanded. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, anybody would, have questions? Just jump right in. That's so the figure down at the bottom, the eight hundred and eleven seven fifty three. Bottom, the first page. Uh, no, last page. The grand so, total. Oh, we haven't got to that. So that's okay. going to be increased by thirty eight. So eight four nine one five five. I mean, everything else I've kept the same. The oil stone at the 70,000, the highway tools at 1260, yeah. snow removal 75, 390, right. machine maintenance at 100,000. So the, the snow removal, you said you're about how much? Is Roughly 43,000 43. at this point. Okay. Um, what about uh, account 55800? maintenance, have a garage, other supplies. You, last year you were appropriated 4000 this year you're requesting 1000 Is there anything that's letting you know that you need more this year? Under highway garage maintenance. Yeah, which, which line which, item? Where are we? Other supplies is talking on the bottom of the page two. The very last one that I upped? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right here. Well, that was for like maintenance on the, the lights and stuff, which could become a shortfall because we had all new energy efficient lights put in. Mm -hmm. And that's what I explained to Debbie early in the year that I paid out all the money. It was almost $7,000 for all the upgrade, electrical upgrades we did. But we get a couple thousand dollars back, but it goes into the general fund yeah. when it comes back. <laughs> so. We're trying to compensate on the savings so because the salt shed went up because we had to put a separate service, service in out there because our mm -hmm. service in the garage wasn't big enough, so we're getting uh, electric bills and different things. That's why I upped that a little bit. Okay. To compensate for a couple other things. We've had some garage doors break. We've got some new ones. We've still got one old, one live. Well, it kind of looks just like it's a, a reallocation of the repair and maintenance up above because the, the line item, bottom yeah. line, stayed the same. Right, because the one up above, the 52400, that code is actually a purchase of service code. So if if you're looking for more to buy 
things and install them yourself, then it ends up under the supplies. The, the, the service code is like hiring somebody to, to do the work. Okay. And the other thing I took into consideration, we've had a couple, I mean the stove's now six years old, like a circulator pump went got in that cold weather that we had yeah. and that, that was four or five hundred dollars to have that replaced. Okay. And then uh, on the last page is level funding on the cemetery. Correct. I mean, we were down a little, we rebid it last year, and it was only a year contract, so we're going to rebid again this year, each year, and right now it's been a little lower than what we had originally paid, so. Is it Snows now? Snows did it this year, correct. Yeah. Yeah. All right, any, we're going to get into capital, but any questions on this budget? No? Okay. And the capital was just the outlay on the other that I left there. Okay. Uh, for this would be on a large sheets that we have here, the capital plan. Um, Voted for 170,000 for a truck. Yep. You had it. We got it last week and then went back. <laughs> just, just in time, right? Oh, uh, we plowed one storm with it and then it didn't start. So. <laughs> Come on. So I went to pick it up today. They said it was ready and it didn't start when I got there. <laughs> so they were a little embarrassed. <laughs> I <don't think> so. <laughs> huh. But we we. We got the new truck last Monday. Yeah. We plowed with it last Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> and it went back last Wednesday. <laughs> or Thursday morning they picked it up. So what was it? Well they said it they thought it was a broken fuel line. Uh -huh. it it would start after a while, it just turns over quite a bit and they found a guy explained it to me this morning when we went to pick it up. It was a, a crimp nut that didn't get crimped properly at the factory. Oh. Uh -huh. But then they started it, and then I went out to get in it, and it <laughs> started. So well, they had to dig a little deeper. I mean, you know, they're taking <laughs> care of it all. They were they were very good about it. I mean, they called the next day after I used it to see how it worked, and uh -huh. so. And then there was a couple other things that are supposed to be shut off on it when we get it uh, because of the hills. Um, it's more of a fuel economical thing for flat roads, uh -huh. but because we plow with it. In the computer, they have to shut it off, so it was having a shifting problem. But they're addressing all the problems. But we Greenfield or we? No, oh, no, this um, it had to go to Westminster Freightliner. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. Now, let's see what else we had. That was about it for this. Yeah. This past year, that was. It. Yeah. Okay. Now. I want to go over what you've got on, uh, <clears throat> on your capital plan that you've submitted now. And I think it's probably changed from, I don't know how yeah. everybody keeps, but like the 05 International, I moved up a little more because we just put a dump body on it. So Which the, one is that? The that 2005 International five. that I have out at 21. Um, that a few years ago was due to be replaced at 10 years, but yeah. then we did the dump body instead, so we're going to keep it longer. All right. Make um, a note of that. Because we're going to update this capital request. And yeah. it looks like the price has changed too, by the looks. Yeah. Because on the capital well, I'm plan. I'm assuming that's what, by the time we get ready to do something. <laughs> so it might be a little high, but I'm, you know kind of guessing from the way trucks have jumped in price over the years. So that's how you've moved that up to replace in 2021? Yeah. Because the body was rotted right off of it last two years ago and then we could, we appropriated money in a special town meeting okay. to have a new body put on. Yeah, I remember that. So, okay, so the 400 figure is there, all right? Yeah. Uh, the 
the loader, that's the same as you had on before, 2005 loader. Yeah, I think I just upped the price a little because we've, there's really nothing around the loader at this point. I'm not okay. saying that something couldn't happen to it. We were trying to have every, the lease equipment on a 10 year rotation, but. Okay. Uh, um, then the 2007 International. Uh, that would be due to be replaced in 22. Okay. Yeah, and then where I'm up in the, the 550 with this, that new truck that we're getting now, mm -hmm. basically this truck isn't going to be used as much, so it'll probably last longer. Okay. It's not going to get the mileage that the new truck will get. Okay. And then uh, by that time, let's see, the 2012 will come on for replacement in 23, that is? Yep. Okay. And the chipper, yeah, okay, 24. that, now you had it on before for 2022 uh, at 100,000. Now you're going to keep it a couple yeah. years longer, yeah. but you think we the price did, is... We just did some work to it and, we, okay. you know, the hours that are on it and we haven't had too much trouble with it, so. Yeah, yeah but the price is going up by Oh, now. well, the price of everything. <laughs> it's pretty well, scary to be honest yeah. with you. <clears throat> the longer... You try to keep something longer and then prices have gone up too. The so. whole problem, I mean, well, what we were trying to get around even with the backhoe that we got is this, this new DEF fluid stuff we have to burn. That's where a lot of the problems are in all the vehicles. That's where have the 550 truck, that's this uh, 2012, we have problems yeah. constantly with it. It's always going back. It freezes when we're plowing snow because it's a water or a water salt mixture that injects into the diesel fuel, and it has mm -hmm. heaters and stuff in it. But it it gums up. It it, it looks like caked, uh, like dried soap really when it dries really? up. And I think when it sits around, it gets into different things. And the unfortunate part when we send something up like that to get clean, we can't do it. I mean, we got it back, Yeah. well, it's got to go back again, but we got it back this past fall and it was like $4,500 just to, that's the problem with everything anybody buys. It's not just anything yeah, we're oh buying. Yeah. It's, yeah. That's but, why I was looking for a used backhoe at the time to stay away from it. But from, I think it's from actually last year on most of the equipment, everything has it. So it doesn't really matter how you try to put anything off or, Buy yeah. something you use. I mean, the chipper, this chipper that we bought, and they, they very well could be something very good and used when we go to get it. This is worst case scenario. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. We happen to find that other, the chipper that we have now, we got a really good deal because it was used and it was in good shape. It was low hours. Yeah. Right? Somebody trades it every couple of years. Okay. Um, that's why we tried to start wording things if we could find something comparable. If, when we ask at town meeting, it leaves it a little more open if we can find something yes. trade at a, a, a good value. We don't have to go with the new. Sure, sure. Okay, that makes sense then. And the same with some of these trucks. You might find a truck that's a year old and some, some of these people are trading in. They're finding that it's not worth keeping trucks very long anymore. That's the big thing that a lot of highways are talking about. Really? Um, okay, now this one that you just got last Monday, is that a 17 or 18? It's a 17. It's still a 17, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> that save a little money or wasn't the timing just right? The that? timing wasn't really, that was in the midst of the change, unfortunately. Okay, yeah, all right. Some of it did and some of it, but we went, I went with a stainless steel body so it lasts longer. Okay. We've been putting steel bodies on and we've been replacing them. So, no. for instance, this 2005, if, if back in 05, I had probably spent maybe another twelve to 15000 at that time. Yeah. We wouldn't have had to put a $40,000 body on uh -huh. now. But when we always crunch numbers, it, yeah. usually this, the stainless steel comes in at a lot more money. But I haven't found a highway department yet anymore because of the salt and the corrosive stuff that we use. Day in and, and we're in the worst of it every day. We're out as yeah. it's being put down by other people. Um, even though we wash and clean things as yeah. much as we can, 
I think stainless is the way to go, but it's a little more money in the long run. This this dump body did cost me on this truck. I think it was an extra seventy five hundred dollars. But the initial but it investment is is going to be there for the duration of yeah, the truck. Yeah. And actually, if in ten to fifteen years that truck they still make the same length and style, that's yeah. another problem people have had. You could switch this body because it'll last a long time because yeah, it's so all stainless. Move it to another truck. Right. Side. That's the that's and this is what a lot of these other guys are starting to do now is move stuff around. But when you get into some of these smaller trucks, the pickups, the smaller mm -hmm. one tons, the three fifties, number one, the frames aren't holding up for what we do with them. That's the reason I went with a little bigger truck too, oh, because of the okay. weight in the frame. <clears throat> the snow plows are bending the frames is what they're doing because yeah. of the weight and the frames, the steel is so much lighter. Too heavy with them. Well, it's more the steel just isn't oh. made like it used to be. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it, it's no different than your car or anybody's car. You have the plastic that are on it. <laughs> yeah, a lot of plastic. <laughs> and you take and push a steel snow plow over the frost <laughs> heaves and everything else. Yeah. We're having a big problem with the, uh, the the frame horns on the front where the plow frame hooks and bends them. Oh, okay. On the smaller trucks, I know the town of Conway, I think, has been through two or three uh, frames on one of their smaller trucks. Oh. So by going to this heavier duty truck gives us a wider frame, solider frame all around mm -hmm. to handle everything. Okay. Plus it's still, it's, it's bigger, but it's still a, under the GVW where like a summer help person could drive it because they don't have to have a CDL oh, to drive it. Okay. It's under the 26,000. Yeah. It looks like a mid-sized dump truck, a, a good sized one. Yeah but it's still under all the CDL qualifications. So oh, if we did oh. have somebody, sure. you know, like when we do summer help, a lot of times they can still drive. So. Oh, that's good, man. And yeah. the, the one we got last year, the demo that we purchased has been a great truck. Yeah. I mean, we can't say enough good about it. That's why we went with this second one. And it's like anything. I think once you get the bugs worked out of it, it yeah. hope it's yeah. hard. Do any of the towns, Lease any of the trucks. A lot of them are now. Yeah. Because of computer and wiring problems, ninety percent of it. And yeah. the the value for the trade on the the lease is a lot better because they're not going out. That's one of the big problems. Sometimes when you go out fifteen twenty years on our trucks, they're not. If somebody comes and looks at them because you're five thousand dollars. Yeah. Uh, Depending on the brand truck too, because like the, one of the internationals, the small one we have, I was told by a salesman the other day, nobody will give us anything for it, even though it's a 2012. Really? Because international had a lot of problems with that year. Yeah. Okay. So they can't resell them. Yeah. But a lot of the towns are getting fifty to sixty thousand dollars on a resale if they don't go more than three years. Yeah. Three to four years is in there with a the lease. So. Hmm. I, we don't down the I, I mean I don't it's hard to say the, the the only time you need a lot of trucks is the winter time it's, yeah yeah and it's the hardest time on them I mean the big trucks we use all summer along the the three big dump trucks as far as the efficiency of operation of a bigger truck it's um worth it I suppose you know they oh these ten wheelers are yeah the fuel that they use. The, well, you can take, I mean, I, I take, for instance, when anybody asks me, you go up South Mountain Road yeah. with eight yards compared to 16 yards, you're taking Six. two loads with one person yeah, and yes. one, what that other truck is going to use to, you know, double the fuel yes, and the maintenance and everything else. Sure. It's been a, it's a big thing, plowing snow, the, the, actual, the wing on the side, it, I mean, Honestly, when I first started 16 years ago, it would take us probably 12 to 15 hours cleaning up some snowstorms. And we've got it down to about four to six hours now. That's good. So, so it's I mean, it. that's, it's well, I mean, the, the added, again, it's the added expense of the plow out to the side. If you tell somebody 15 to $20,000, yeah. it looks like a lot of money, but that's having another whole truck or person and one person running it. Yeah. Yeah. So in the long run, it's a it's a considerable savings. Mm -hmm. no, that's good. The big thing we're having trouble with now is the salt sand. Everybody wants you to switch to straight salt environmentally, and it doesn't work on dirt. That's yeah. our biggest problem. People don't understand like our town how it's 
I can't send one truck just to do a dirt road over here and then over here and down here. And everybody has a little, it's the same with carbide edges. We buy them and I had a guy come in the other day trying to sell me one that's a little better, but it doesn't work good on dirt. So it doesn't help us. No, it, no. it definitely saves on blades on the, the blacktop, but to switch trucks around the, the cost isn't yeah. efficient enough that I can see yet. Uh, no, I notice one of our neighboring towns is trying to prohibit use of any salt in the center of the town because of its effect on wells mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. Um, so do we have many, many roads where we're using the pure salt? No, we don't have any. We don't, I don't None. use first pure salt yet. Okay. Not at all. Because of that. I, yeah. I've been to several meetings and it, it, nobody can answer the question when you go to the meetings. They really... I know the state puts in wells all the time. They tell you it doesn't affect it. And they've put in, well, they've put in several wells here in town on 63 and stuff yeah. from the salt. And I know there's some places over by the steel shed, I was told 200, 300 feet off the road are high sodium in their wells. Really? Yeah. I mean, it goes someplace and I don't, Yeah. the way I watch them dump it down, I just, I understand the savings cost of per lane mile if you adjust your spinner, putting a lot less material down. Yeah. I also see, I'm not out for as, anywhere near the black ice that they're out for because there's still grit. I mean, this morning I went out, but I didn't have to call anybody in. I had like two patches that I took care of myself. Yeah. Whereas Mass Highway was on every road this morning because they had black ice almost everywhere because they don't have any type of grit for traction. Or, uh -huh. I mean, we lose a lot on Gulf Road because it's busy sometimes. That in like 142, there's a lot of high traffic, it yeah. blows off. Yeah. But I actually just purchased some tanks that's supposed to, we're going to spray the, the road solvent that we use on our dirt roads. Yeah. We're going to inject it onto our spinners, which in turn injects it onto the sand yeah. to make the sand stickier to stick to the road better. Oh. That's what we're trying. We're trying to retrofit a couple of the trucks right yeah. now to try it. It's a little bit of an expense, but at most of the classes, Waitley just did it. I think Conway's in the process of doing two trucks. That's that's what we're seeing is a little less expensive because we can cut back on our sand a little bit yeah. and salt a little bit if we can keep it on the road is what we're hoping. Now the state does some treating ahead of a storm a little bit, it seems like. That's what we're in the process, the tank that I already had for spraying dirt roads. We had it on that old fire truck and we're going to move it into, I can't really convince anybody to come in and drive in the middle of the night oh. <laughs> when there's no heat and very limited on windshield oh, wipers. Oh. So we're going to put that on one of the smaller trucks and yeah. we're going to actually try that because that, that supposedly is going to prevent the Stick, ice sticking, sticking to the, the some of the roads. So we yeah. are going to try that a little bit. That same treatment that we use on that is what we're going to inject on the sand at the same time yeah. and try it. Yeah. And that's what a lot of the towns have found has been the most inexpensive way at this because we already have the tanks. I've had the tanks now for seven, eight years that we've been doing our dirt roads with. Mm -hmm. So we just have to switch to a winter blend that won't freeze. Oh. Um, it's pretty, it's within, I think it's five cents of cost to have it delivered to our yard then we could fill the tank and then we could go out and spray yeah. the only thing that i would do honestly is the spray because the spray what they talk about at all the meetings is it gets into all the pores in the road so even i guess what bothers me the most is if i go out and spread a little bit of salt on all the roads say like the town of greenfield's doing now and then the storm doesn't get here <laughs> then people look at me and say you know i mean you just wasted you know, up to a thousand, two thousand dollars in product. Yeah. Um, but the spray gets into the pores of the road, and then the the tips of the plow reheat that chemical and cause the same heat that the cars. Oh. So even if I say I spray it on a Friday, they claim if I we weren't to plow till a Saturday or Sunday, that it'll still rejuvenate it. Uh -huh. So these are smaller things I'm looking at yeah. way before I even. Think of switching the, yeah. to the salt. Does the salt melt the road off a lot quicker? A hundred percent quicker. Yeah. There's yeah. there's no doubt. But to me, there's a lot of other things that go along with it that I don't like. I mean, 
it doesn't work well on dirt. So again, I've if I send the two trucks because I got one big truck on South Mountain and one on Golf Road, then I have to send another truck to do Orange Road, yeah, Old no. Wendell Road, off from those all roads. those spurs. Yeah. Which now I don't have a, a big enough truck that mm -hmm. can do everything in one load of sand. So I look at the efficiency on how efficient is that guy coming all the way back to get a load of sand to go all the way back up another mountain. <coughs> When the guy's already up there doing it. Might as well use right. what he's got. So yeah. that's why we're trying these this chemical first. I know Vernon did it. Um, they've got it on one truck and now they're putting it on two more because it works great. Yeah. They said mm -hmm. I was talking with them. And the town of Hinsdale's been looking into it. So I found some used tanks so I didn't have to pay. I mean the tanks are like five thousand dollars normally, but I found some for four hundred and fifty dollars a piece and it was wow. unpaid. Quite a savings. Yeah. And they, they're fine, in good condition. They're in great condition, and actually they're better than the $5,000 tank doesn't. These have stainless steel straps to hold them all on the trucks already. And that, that was our, my other big thing, is we haul mostly our own sand. And the tanks, the way they hang, they hang off the back of the truck. These are all set up so we can just put a chain on them, lift them off, oh. and disconnect them. Yeah. And set them aside while the truck calls saying at the end of the night if it's going to snow we can hook them right back on the tailgate. So they were convenient compared to all the systems I looked at. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good then. So we're, we're trying different methods, but yeah. the, I mean the state are the ones that put these programs on and they want you to switch. Why? I mean, I'm paying what, seven, I think it's 780 for sand a ton and a ton of salt is 57, 75. <laughs> so why did they want you to switch? So that you can be like them, I guess. So the roads are black and wet. That's what that's what's creating the problem up here on the mountain. Is these truckers and the GPS? They're, you know, they turn off these roads that are black that they keep constantly black, and then they get on a a back rural road that isn't taken care of like Mass Highway takes care. Of. I know. It seems like the sand is going to stay better. To me, but they I don't know anything it, about it. It supposedly so. smothers the fish the more it washes into the streams. And the salt's good for them? The salt supposedly <laughs> dilutes before it. But that's my problem when you watch them come up Main Street, the way they dump it out, I can't, there's no way it dilutes. It doesn't break down that fast. I personally <laughs> think it pollutes a lot more than sand. Mm -hmm. And then they say they save on the sweeping end of things. Every summer I see they'll still see them sweeping the roads. Yeah. But they blame it on us because people are dragging sand off our oh. roads out onto theirs a little bit. Oh. You still have to clean your catch basins out because you yeah. still have a certain amount of pollution that runs off of people's lawns, the dirt mm -hmm. that runs into the drains to do the, <clears throat> the catch basin cleaning. And this, that's, that's all part of the street sweeping, catch basin cleaning. There's really no way around mm -hmm. it. It's got to be done. It might not need to be done quite as often, but they still clean their drains every year to keep up with it because, I mean, we've kind of got ours on half the town and half the town now, finally, except for the two mountains, we clean our basins every year. But, like, we'll skip this side of town one year and do this other down mm -hmm. in the farms, which has been working good. Of course, we had our own truck up until that just died too, so we shared the truck with the sewer department. Mm -hmm. But we're going to look at whether we're going to, it's worth fixing it or not. But it's been saving us about $20,000 a year by doing it ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, that's good. We're just trying. I mean, we're sure. trying little things without spending a lot of money. Sure. Okay. Um, and I think this chemical, by spraying it, the chemical costs a little bit more on top of the sand and salt I already buy. But if it cuts me back on my sand and salt, mm -hmm. yeah. it's a savings on the other yeah. end. I, you must notice the truck traffic coming by your place. Oh, do I ever. <laughs> and sometimes I notice it when I get stuck behind the ones that don't make it going home. I haven't I been in it's, it's, one storm it's this year. ridiculous. The tractor trailers aren't stuck up here. They, mm -hmm. they just are... Middle of the day the other day, following a, a GPS. record pulling another vehicle from, I think he was headed to Marlboro, Mass or somewhere. Yes. His GPS showed him that was shorter, and he was just above Bill Kilpatrick's house, right where they yeah. all, and, couldn't, and our, the plow truck had just gone up ahead of him, but 
he was towing something that's slimy enough. He couldn't make it. No, but every storm I've gotten called to go up there to get a tractor trailer. Some, yeah, something is. Because there's no way they can turn be, around. Well, that's be what everybody's People. been after me about putting signs up. The problem we're already running into is right out here, out back on Warwick Road, because if they miss that turn, yeah. their GPS is rerouting them, and now we're getting called because everybody's on the lot on the corner of East Street yeah. and Warwick Road. So my fear is if I put a sign out there, when they get rerouted, they're still going to end up, but they're destroying everybody else's property. Yeah. The if problem. they go by there, the trailer truck, it's like, you could probably go out every day and there's been two or three new sets of tracks on the people's lawn on the corner there. Really? And the other day the cops actually called because the truck got stuck and it knocked three quarters of the snowbank across the road. We had to go plow it out of the road. And it was a guy that said he missed Maple Street and his GPS said reroute, reroute. And so it and took him down the east, east. Back <laughs> up onto Maple Street. Yeah, the traffic has just really increased. So much. And so I don't much. know where to put GPS. signs that are, will be convenient other than, and it's still a dangerous area, if we put something just before Alexander Hill to tell them to turn around because it's a steep grade, but if then if they try backing into Alexander, they're right on the corner there. Yeah, yeah. So Somebody so, comes around. Oh, right. Not so that. it's, mm -hmm. a, every, I, I don't know how many calls I've gotten in the past couple of months because of all the traffic. I just even notice it when I'm coming up Main Street and the number of trucks that are coming out, Maple, you know, right there. Just well, it, it's amazing on how many trucks in the summer come up Mountain Road that their GPS states that's quicker for them to get to 91 than staying on Route 2. Some of the fancy tractor trailer trucks when we're out there working, I, I, I can't believe, I'm like, what are you doing up here? Turn by the, that's by the cemetery. Yeah, because yeah. mm -hmm. that's what their GPS is telling them to turn at the cemetery. That's a quicker route to get on to 91. And half of them are, when you talk to them, they're headed to Connecticut. Yeah, I that said, would you be... could have stayed right on Route 2. And been yeah. There. I said, you'd have been on 91 by now, just get up here. <laughs> <laughs> oh it's the God. GPS that's a, it's a yeah. huge problem. That yeah. we're, at least that's what I'm seeing here in town. And GPS isn't thinking about whether it's a passenger vehicle or a right. tractor trailer or right. whatever. Well, or the road conditions. Right. Or the skill of the drivers or all kinds of things. Yeah. And the first so, storm is, was a normal, you know, it, nobody has the good tires. And right. I mean, there was three cars from Connecticut on the side of the road and the guy wouldn't even get back. One of them, he said he wouldn't get back in the car. He was so scared. <laughs> <laughs> So we made it halfway get, down the mountain. We've got to get this GPS <laughs> business changed, I guess. That's a, well, uh, questions from anybody? No? Anybody else? All right. All right, Tom. Thank All you. Right, thank you. Yeah. Face for her name. <laughs> <laughs> Sue Kaczynski, and she's the newest member on our board. So you are ready for the senior center, I take Well, <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> we'll take you early. We'll take you early. <laughs> okay. Um, as usual, we're looking for any looking to talk about any changes in it. So the first, everybody has a copy of the budget. Um, Meetings and seminars, you want $10 more in there from 70 up to 80? Right, um, because things were getting a little close, I had to do my CPR, AED, and that, that went up this year. Okay. But I reduced... You have to be certified. I do. For the position you're in. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I, but I reduced um, the supplies, so... Yeah. Uh, postage going up. 
Yeah, because I never know exactly what it's going to be. And I buy three, usually three boxes of envelopes at the beginning of the year prepaid to get me through the year. Mm -hmm. And um, while we are doing uh, less mailing because more people are getting it online, yeah. when we do the townwide mailing, which is coming up this, um, this next month, you know, we've got a lot of people and so we, we use a lot for that. Okay. Um, then there's a decrease of 100 in the office supplies. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that the net is level. Mm -hmm. Oh, there was a forty dollar increase in dues and memberships. Is that right? And that's yep. Yeah, that's um, in anticipation of the MCOA dues going up, and I never know exactly what they're going to be. Mm -hmm. um, and the other dues I pay are for the monthly meeting that I go to in Greenfield for the Franklin Resource Network. Okay, so come off the, top? the increases are offset by the decreases. The net result is level funded budget. I took to heart what you asked. Yeah, very good. <laughs> do you want to take this opportunity while you're on television to do a little publicity about what's going on? Well, sure. We have um, the next thing that's on our agenda is we have a retreat coming up on Saturday for the board, and we are going to be looking at where we want to be in five years mm -hmm. and what we want, what we need to do to get there. So looking forward to that. Um, we have a group of, uh, that started with the council, but they now have moved on and, and are making their own group for the, the Village to Village program, which you may or may not have heard something about. It's a national uh, program that's looking for, to towns to basically um, have a kind of a hub where people can get the information they need to be able to stay in their homes. So we've got a group of, I think they're what, five now? Yeah, five I or think six. so. We've got a, it's really very exciting, I think, because uh, you know, the things are changing. People age differently. Everything is, uh, needs are different. Yes. And this is really a program yeah. to help people. If you know, you know, that's a thing that's frustrating to people is that um, if you live here and you've lived here forever, um, there comes a point where you need more and more assistance in doing your daily life. And people have to either make choices of finding a way to stay here and figure it out or they have to leave the area and, and people don't want to do that but they sometimes sometimes have to and this program is really uh, makes a, a central like a clearinghouse for because usually we say when people have some sort of needs or they need information go ask Heather Heather knows all that stuff <laughs> but uh, this will be a sort of putting everything under one umbrella is this geared for a country community like this and yeah we make our own we we, we figure it out and um, put in what the pieces that people need. Yeah. And there will be, you know, uh, I guess they're already working with the county and... Well, the, yes, they've been in touch with um, LifePath and some of the or other organizations yeah. because it's not it's not designed to to not use any of them. It's designed to help coordinate mm -hmm. all of them. I see. So I agencies see. that are already in existence yes. will be sort of a... Information. An information. And of also they hope to set up locally um, people who can offer assistance to people. Just simple yeah. little jobs, you know, fix it things and um, change the light bulb. Technology things, even, yeah, you know, changing the light bulb if it's on that ceiling and, you know, you aren't yeah. adept at a ladder anymore. Just to have somebody change the silly light bulb is a big deal for somebody and it's a simple deal for somebody else to do it. So yeah. it just, see, it all makes sense, you know, and, and it's very That's exciting that these people have really. That's good. Taken hold of it and said, "Okay, let's do this because it's needed in Northfield." And Is this people that are on your council, or two yes. of them are, but they've gone out for others. So it's it's not a program of the council, but the the yeah. idea came from there and and then was implemented I out. See. So which I think is great. Um, yeah. it, it's it's not something that the council could take on. It's certainly not something I could take on. Yeah. So having this is wonderful, and they've gotten a lot of good feedback um, from the uh, various organizations. There will be four information sessions that will be posted. Um, I think Steve was putting the signs up today. March 3rd um, to, from 10 to 12 is at the library. Then there's another one, I think it's the 7th or something, that's going to be a PVRS. There's going to be one at Northfield Mountain at the end of the month. And they're also going to be our speaker in March for our breakfast. So 
getting yeah. and they're looking to find out you know what do you think what do you need what have we missed mm -hmm. how can we you know, what ideas do you have yeah that's so that's, that's really good. exciting yeah uh, sometimes it's nice to just tell how much participation you have mm -hmm. downstairs and now how many people on a regular basis or or for meals only or whatever well, we our our bridge club is is probably the most <laughs> attended, and um, it's, we had there are eight folks in today, uh, and they play for two or three hours um, twice a week, and yeah. have a great time. Um, on Tuesdays, we're now down to one meal a week from Life Path, oh. because of our reduced participation. So Tuesdays we have a meal, and the Romeos come sing. So we've always had the most people that day. Yeah. Um, on Thursdays, Jeanette and I cook. Um, because we wanted to keep that going. And then when we lost Monday, we looked at each other and said, mm -mm. so we now do a bag lunch. So anybody can come, bring their lunch, and you know, have the camaraderie. So our participation is um, kind of mixed. There are people who come for a program, or like we'll just come for the breakfast, we'll come for the concerts in the summer, we'll come to the picnics, um, we'll come for the, um, the clam bake, yeah, um, yeah. You so get good turnouts for those. We do, we do. Yeah. And then sometimes they'll come in for information, or sometimes they'll come in to play a game. Or mm -hmm. so it's we're not definitely we do not um, have a lot of of the people coming in. I think um, Pam figured out that there are over a thousand folks in town who are already sixty and over. We don't see all of them no. for a variety of reasons. Some of them are still working. Some of them. Um, I think the senior center is for old people. It's for old people, yeah. not for and us. It's for all those other people. Yeah. And we'll take anybody from anywhere. Um, yeah. I'm, <laughs> no, I mean, I've got some folks that come in from Warwick because they don't have something there. I've got folks that come from Greenfield because they like what we have. So it doesn't matter, yeah. really. Yeah. We have um, two support kind of groups going now, one for caregivers and one for folks who have lost a spouse. And those are well attended. In fact, my caregiver group said we need this more than once a month, so we're now meeting twice a month. Oh, yeah, that's good. So we're we're filling some sure. some niches in places. Wherever there's a need, you're trying to fulfill that yep. need. If I know about it, and we can do something about it, we, sure. we definitely will. Uh. So we're um, yeah we're looking forward to all of that, and we've got um, of course concerts will be coming up this summer. I'm going to mm -hmm. start booking them. And okay. um, I believe the library wants to use the pavilion for concerts, which I think is fabulous. Yeah. So if it becomes, it's a, it's a wonderful place to perform in and to listen yeah. in. Um, so everybody who's come wants to come back. Can we come next week? Can, you know, whatever. So this is a good thing. Yeah. And to have a place that's in town that, is seen, that can be seen as the venue for outdoor concerts. And is easily wonderful. accessible to the pavilion yeah, out, yeah. they park the car and just walk yeah. a little ways. And, and the cream is just across the street. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do they give you a cut? <laughs> no, but uh, Tim has been really uh, wonderful. It was, uh, I guess, two or three years ago now, he suggested that I put the concerts on a bookmark and he said, and leave them here. Oh, so they're publicity. advertised there. They're at the bank. They're at the library, and then we'll be, we incorporated um, Silverthorne Theater when they begin yeah. coming out to give previews. They go on the other side, so it's a two-sided yellow post uh, bookmark that you'll yeah. see around town. Yeah, that's a good idea then. Yeah, so the more people that know about it, the better. Exactly. So any we, questions anybody has? I just have uh, one question mm -hmm. um, because they currently sit on the. Public Safety Committee, uh, mm -hmm. Building Committee. Obviously, it would. Be, uh, are you uh, under any constraints now with the facility that you use now in the basement of obviously the town hall, either its physical size or what ha it has available for uh, providing services to seniors? Yeah, we could use more space. Yes. Um, we have our our exercise classes all take place in the auditorium right below us, mm -hmm. because it's it's a it's a wooden floor as opposed to a cement floor for one thing. But it's a good space for there, and also we can do something else. But I have to um, when I only have one room for activities to happen in. There's a lot of juggling that goes on, and we are finding more and more that we're really kind of straining to juggle. And you think that may have a negative impact on people coming uh, wanting to come to your facility, or? Well, there are people who say they only want to come to a new building. Gotcha. <laughs> they don't want to come to the basement. So but my one um, concern there is, uh, since this, I'm not affected, I don't know if there's any mold issues, because I know that, that water has been an issue in the past. And for people who are sensitive to mold, 
that would be an issue. And I just simply don't know if that is. Well, they're working, I think, on the uh, drainage of the parking lot again. Because yes, uh, it used to be a problem around the yeah. pipe right. in the sports there, mm -hmm. that it would come up there and loosen up the tiles. Right. So, but there's money now to be working on that drainage, isn't there? There is. Some, our hopes are that we get this drainage attenuated by the spring. Mm -hmm. It requires a purchase, possibly, of land that's adjacent yeah. to the pavilion. And so you have to work with the homeowner. If that's not an option, then we do have a, a contingency plan, but it will be dealt with by the spring. Yeah, that'd be yeah. nice. So as I say, that's just something I, I simply don't know. Um, when we have our, our foot clinic, uh, it's in the office, mm -hmm. which is always interesting because I'm in there and other people are in there and um, if I have to make a private phone call, I've got to find someplace else to do it. Or if they want some privacy, I mean, it's just not possible. So another space for that and another space, I mean, I, I, as you may notice, the other thing I attached was when the police station, and when the police find a new home, those rooms will definitely be a great help. Well, that's the reason is that one of the aspects of obviously when we do seek, you know, if we do uh, move forward, mm -hmm. you'll seek the support of seniors because obviously this would be attractive and a, a benefit to seniors of having more space, obviously, mm -hmm. to share again, you know, with the police department. And eventually, hopefully, we can find another location you know, for the police department to, uh, you know, relocate to. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, I just wanted to hear from you because, you know, uh, if it is a limitation, and is a limitation not only its quality, but on its size for senior services in mm -hmm. this town. Because uh, I've seen in many other communities, they've had senior, you know, uh, uh, centers obviously located in basements of town halls or mm -hmm. taking up space in some other municipal building. And uh, I've seen other communities that have their own standalone mm -hmm. senior uh, centers, which are you know larger and obviously more modern, more accessible, you know uh, that, that they have done here, you know, in other communities. And uh, it seems that when you provide a more modern or uh, more capable facility, that the numbers, uh, you know, the because I, I'll be honest, with you, I work for the also for the city of Northampton for mm -hmm. their senior center. <laughs> That's beautiful. And be honest with you, you see the people, when they have a, a, a facility that they not only enjoy going to, <laughs> they, they find it, uh, it's just, it just really, it, it's it increased the numbers of people mm -hmm. making use of the facility. It also provides the opportunity to provide more services to the seniors. Mm -hmm. So it does increase the participation mm -hmm. uh, in that. Uh, obviously, you know, I'm not saying the Northampton <laughs> Center is going to be, but I, I again, if we do move forward, we mm -hmm. hope that the uh, your support or the mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, uh, and especially you know, getting the seniors mobilized and yourselves, that would be helpful to us in when we do go forward with the building uh, to uh, support sure. uh, so they do facilitate public safety building because it would be advantageous to the seniors. Absolutely, and there would need to be some some um, reworking of, of the spaces mm -hmm. and. For instance, I know that we'll have to continue to have the, because the elevators there, we'll have to make sure that people can get in that way, but to have some other spaces that were available would be wonderful. And the other thing we really need is Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. I've had someone offer to do some computer classes, um, but we don't have the computers, but if we had Wi-Fi, people could bring their own and we could have a class. Um, so that's something you're looking to possibly in the future purchase oh. or install for, you know? Well, I, I thought that was part of <laughs> a town hall plan. There is a box downstairs that says um, on the wall that says Wi-Fi. So my understanding was that a new. It couldn't be extended from the one that's um, down downstairs, but it had to be a new one. And I don't understand all of these things, but that's what I was told. Um, so we could have Wi-Fi back there, and that would you know make a lot of things possible. And, and be honest with you, people think seniors don't use computers or iPads oh, or, uh -huh. or even smartphones, and it's surprising they have Wi-Fi all through the center there. And yeah. believe me, they use it. Yes. Absolutely. I, I, you, you can't live under the stereotype that, you know, mm -hmm. they're flip, the only thing they use are flip phones, which is ridiculous. Yeah. They use tech, modern technology, Absolutely. and I think, you know, that we should accommodate their needs also, mm -hmm. instead of just, you know, forgive me, not ignoring it, but right. saying, oh, well, they don't use it. No, we should provide it. You know, I well, think I think the whole image, you know, the whole yes. aging process is 
it's just different today. And when you know people in their 70s and 80s, they're out there doing things. You know, you go to any of the town committees, this, these people, you know, we tend to, you know, I, I, again, I think too of them and us, you know, it's these people. No, it's us too. You know, yeah. we're all seniors. Um, and I, and there is a stigma, kind of an image thing of going to the senior center and, uh, or taking the senior van. We have people who recently have realized, oh yeah, it's not so bad. You know, you can get where you want to go. They'll take you to your doctor's appointment. They'll take you to Greenfield to do shop or do whatever you want to do. But there was always this, oh, you know, you take the senior van. And the idea that seniors don't use Wi-Fi, you know, or, or computers, it's another area where we can be helpful. You know, if we have working Wi-Fi, um, well, we've already talked about yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of things that go on. And you you're just... right about transportation because they started that transportation program in Northampton. And let me tell you, it has just exploded with use. Yeah. Because again, a lot of people, would, you know, if you offer them transportation and mobility mm -hmm. and that they're not isolated, you'd be surprised at how many people are unfortunately are in that situation. Mm -hmm. And you just draw them out. They get involved in the community again. Get involved in more as different aspects of their, you know, instead of, you know, they expand their outreach into uh, uh, not only doctors' appointments but getting uh, around to shopping and doing exactly. the bait. And it's really just grown surprisingly uh, how fast it's grown in, in uh, usage. Mm -hmm. And again, that's something that uh, you know, who knows for the future here, maybe an option someday, maybe, but. It's, uh, it's really been surprisingly well received and, and it's grown quite substantially. And people also don't realize that if they have issues carrying their bags to their house because the drivers can't, you can take someone with you and they ride free and they don't have to be a senior. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So your teenage granddaughter can come along and, and help you out with that or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot, definitely a lot of advantages, um, but there, there's something about being a senior. The image I think that people have is of their grandparents. And seniors today are not our grandparents. Yeah. So it's just, we have to remember that. And people, all people have to realize that that's not what's going on. I've got a group of 90-year-olds, 90-plus-year-olds. I defy anybody to keep up with them. When we did our second annual Gay 90s party this fall, we sent out 38 uh, invitations. There are 38 people in town who are 90 or over this year. So there's a lot of folks out there. And we had a blast. Absolutely. Well, you know what I say, some of these people say something about the seniors and so forth. I said, if you're lucky, you may be one someday. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Only the fortunate get to join the ranks. That's right. <laughs> and um, <laughs> last, last year we had a presence at the Memorial Day Parade, yes. and I hope yes. that this year we can yeah. convince more people to hop in, too. It's, yeah, that was good. It, it was yeah, I, I enjoyed it, and um, then we even had the use of some golf carts for those who wanted yes. to march but did, you know, weren't sure they Couldn't could do, do the, the, different, distance. the sure. distance or the time. And uh, we had a good time and I think the people along the parade route were surprised to see us and uh, <laughs> I'm hoping to um, convince some of them to join us yeah, this good. year so that, because sometimes uh, you know, there's just this thing people can't get over and I'm one of them too, you know. I, we all <laughs> kind of think it's the other people who need yeah, stuff and we yeah, don't, yeah. but um, I think aging is just a diff whole different thing today if you think of, oh, yes, you know, who, how, what we would be doing when you look at the 80 year olds we know and what they do and maybe several years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago would be a different life, oh, yeah. but people are just... Uh, very active and have different needs. And we have to, that's our challenge too, is to adjust services for yeah. what people need and not just what we've always provided. Yes. We've noticed yeah. with the blood pressure cl clinic that the numbers are down and oh my gosh, what's happening? Well, what's happening is people are taking their own blood pressures at home. Oh, they all wow. have their own <laughs> little thing. And yeah. so now the service they need is to be able to come in once in a while and have, be sure they're devices calibrated mm -hmm. or to sure. be sure uh, maybe a workshop or something to be sure that they do it correctly and so people just need different things than they used to yes. you know yeah. still there are people who come in to have their blood pressure checked regularly but yeah. um, many other people are doing that themselves and we just have to adapt to what's going on and, uh, well it's nice that we can 
have you provide that service to people and recognize those needs. So it's okay. a challenge. Any someday. other questions? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for coming in. Thank you very much. Okay. Good to meet you. Thanks for your question. What other? Okay. All right. Let's see. Um, minutes of the January 8th meeting. I sent those out. Beth did them. And Beth couldn't be here tonight, as you realize by now. But the fact that it's being televised <coughs> gives her something to go on for doing the minutes. <laughs> oh, we have the recorder here too, as long as it's working properly. The recorder, the recorder. Yes. Oh, and okay. Debbie is manning the recorder tonight, so she has that to go by. Yeah. That's right. I think it's recording. <laughs> okay. I know, she said she's Any thoughts on the January 8th minutes? They look good to me. I make a motion to approve the minutes of January 8th. That's written. Motion made and seconded to approve the minutes of January 8th as written. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. By the four that are here tonight. For the sake of the recorder, uh, Dan Campbell is absent tonight, as is Bonnie McWall. Okay. Um, I had, you hadn't, you didn't bring anything, there was no communications, no mail. No, that was all that was in the boxes, the minutes. Yeah, that one, okay, and then the last. Oh, and this that I brought for Bonnie, but I'll have to bring it next okay. time. Um, we will, they have, the select board, I think I announced before, has set the date of February 28th, I think it is, for the receipt of articles for town meeting. And I will submit the usual ones that we have, which are for the omnibus and for the contingency article before that. And then I'll put one in for stabilization funds just to have it in there. We don't know what our situation is going to be on funding these. And uh, we'll talk about it further on in our deliberations here, but it might be that we would need an article on OPEB if we can other post-employment benefits, right? Mm -hmm. If we can start, um, we're supposed to start putting some money aside for that. Uh, just to be sure, I'll probably submit an article, whether we fund it or not, I don't know. So. Oh, oh that comes from the Finance Committee rather than from the Select Board? It doesn't matter who it comes from. Well, I'll be submitting it through them. Oh, okay. So, uh, do you get figures periodically on what our amount is. The OPEB? Yeah. Well, we ha have a, like the mini study done every few years. Yeah, if but not I, I heard that they they come out monthly or quarterly with a figure. You haven't seen anything like that. Monthly or quarterly on yeah. OPEB liabilities? Yeah. No. Okay. All right. No, I had, check on I've it. never yeah. heard of such a thing, actually. I think Lois may be right. I'm Monthly or quarterly? Um, ask from the Franklin Regional Retirement Board because sometimes they have projections. Yeah, okay. So I'll, I'll look into that and I'll get them to you. But okay. I don't think they, yeah, I, they wouldn't have OPEB projections, though. They might. Really? Because mm -hmm. the last I ever saw anything is about three years old, I think. we. Remember we had something? Yeah, we had we had the study done. Yeah. 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 All right. It, it is. Find out. Is it yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any meetings attended representing the finance committee? Your. Uh, there's <coughs> been uh, the public safety and governance committee. There's been no meetings or communications and. Uh, I just have one question uh, for the town minister, uh, Ms. Morales. That uh, any any word on how our title search is going for the? Yep. By the second week of February, we should have information. Okay, that's super. Thank you. I appreciate it. Is that 
coming from the uh, group that, well, consultant, consulting group, or is it coming through our legal counsel? It's coming through our legal counsel. Our legal counsel um, has a relationship with a firm that specializes ex just in that. Okay. And so when we appropriated those $15,000, it was specifically for that. Okay. All right. Thanks. Second week in February, you think? It was a big day. Everybody's fingers crossed. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Probably then you'll be having a meeting. <clears throat> yeah, as soon as we, like I said, when it comes up, we'll have our you know, meeting on that issue and see where we go from there. Okay, uh, Tony, CPA committee. We did meet on the 18th. Okay. Um, and we had three proposals that were submitted to us. Um, and you know, one small and two large. Um, and our next meeting is going to be February 1st, at which time I'm inviting the people who submitted these proposals yeah. to talk to us about them. Okay. And uh, I'm, I'm, I looked at it and I said, if we fund all of these, I don't think there will be anything left in our, in our account. Yeah. <laughs> so, fully. Sure. So, uh, that's why I asked Debbie for the up to the minute thing so we can. Well, basically, what I gave you was the June thirtieth balances. Well, that's, nothing has been. Nothing's been. Nothing's been appropriated since right. then, so. and the income that's come in hasn't really been finalized and allocated well, to the different. Any, okay. Right. So, so the right. income today is less than thirty thousand. All right. So you know, said, so right, you said something like twenty-five thousand. Uh, it is. And if you broke that up into its component parts, I could kind of. Get get an get an idea of what a better idea of what we have. Okay, that's good. Um, I know the uh, the Northfield Elementary PTO submitted photos for playground equipment, which oh. <laughs> um, and we certainly like to help them, um, but uh, like I said. A lot of money, right? And, and we are. Um, we got a proposal too about the uh, more money for the wiring mm -hmm. here um, at the uh, elementary school. For the no, for town, oh, town here, hall. The town hall. And I'm about twenty-nine thousand dollars, the small one. Twenty-nine, twenty-seven, twenty-nine thousand one hundred and seventy-seven dollars. Mm -hmm. Very specific figure. What that is and what that's going to cover. So, uh, we'll so that's the difference between what it costs to do the entire bells and whistles for what's left in town hall, the wiring upgrades, and what's available currently in the appropriation after this current phase is done. I thought we had appropriated all the money that was necessary for that. You guys went up to phase three. Phase four um, was not appropriated for. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, we were going to have to admit it was, I think it was the only, there were three phases that we're familiar with, I thought, yeah. again, yeah. there was no mention of the phase four, so. Because it's, it's all like, the stuff you can put, like wires under the ground, it's to really finish the project, with a Rolls Royce, not yeah. just the Taurus. Big difference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we, yeah, like I said, we'll, uh, we'll okay. not talk to you guys on the Okay, and then you'll then you'll be submitting your own yeah, articles. Our, our <clears throat> yeah. Three what uh, are you still talking about? An article to up the uh, yeah that was that was discussed too, and, and uh, <clears throat> although it isn't an up, it isn't a uh, there's no good time for it. But uh, yes, we are from we're half percent to a Warren article to raise the uh, assessment from point five percent to one. 1.0, yeah, okay. Uh, there's, you know, I've done a little more research on it than uh, the average of all the towns in the uh, Commonwealth, somewhere between one and a half and two percent. Is it? Yeah. It's nowhere near the three percent. There are very few towns that yes. have this fully funded, if you want, the three percent. Mm -hmm. uh, but one uh, percent will 
Well, double, well, double, double what we've yeah. got coming in. Yes. Um, uh, and, you know, we've done a lot of stuff with what the money we've had, and we're hoping that yes. we can do more. Now, the money is, is it all set aside out of last year's for that work that was to be done on the north building, right, the that's, doorway? That's still, that's still there, and it's just, has, yeah, that's an article uh, that... That it hasn't been closed out because the work hasn't been done. The work had not been mm -hmm. done yet. Right. Uh, we had uh, 75000 set aside for it to work okay. on the uh, north building of the elementary The school. entry. The entry yeah. building, the uh, pillars, the uh, bases, etc. Restoring uh, uh, but, uh, the work. Do we know if that... If, is that, uh, that hasn't gone off the procurement yet, and part of the reason is the scheduling of the school years. So as soon as we're getting into the spring, into the summer, that's when we plan to get it done. I know the last time uh, it got pushed back because it was too late to get yeah. it. People have already made their plans for the summer, so I'm hoping that gets, uh, I wanted to find out what's happening with that and how quickly that can get put up to uh, bid because um, we don't want to miss another summer. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think you'll miss another summer, but if you put it up to bid today, you'll have to get it done relatively soon. So this is why Miss no, I mean, Wright... Yeah, but the people are they're planning for their summer work. I mean, so it's not like you don't go uh, in May and say, uh, we need this at the end of June. Uh, the people have filled up their... Uh, no, but you might go in uh, in March or April. And no, say like I said, two weeks weeks to to sooner, sooner mm -hmm. rather than later. Uh, with the stipulation that the work couldn't be started well, yeah, until... Yeah, that would have to be the stipulation, obviously, so yeah. that the work couldn't be done until the kids are out of school. Yeah. So, um, and uh, we're... Uh, shouldn't be that much longer before we know when, when they'll be out of school, I would think. Um, <laughs> Fourth of July, with the, uh, with the s storm closings. Yeah. Um, so no, that's not true. Hopefully it will be... Uh, we'll get that. Yeah. Taken care of. Okay. Um, Very good. And you know we're, we are going to do that. I I'm very cognizant of the fact that our tax rate has gone up considerably this year. Yeah. Um, and I'm thinking that uh, the average home in uh, Northfield, um, even with the new tax rate, would uh, have to about a Buck a week. Yeah. Um, not a lot of money. But you mean I know everybody to go is, from a half a percent to one right, percent. Right. Yeah. If it was one percent. Based on the average uh, valuation in town. Like I was, um, my, I paid $11 mm -hmm. last year. Mm -hmm. oh. It would go up to 22 if it was at the same yeah. rate. Yeah. So I'm figuring higher rate, okay. $30. Uh, even if we're not to $50, yeah. you're talking a, a buck a week. Yes. Uh, so it, it's not a lot of money. I realize everybody says yes. you know, every yeah. little bit that hurts right. if you want. If you, they have to but you've, right. you've accomplished some good projects, though, with oh, the money and, that's and been yeah, available. But we're, like I said, we're, <laughs> uh, we'd love to do the, the whole playground for yeah. the elementary school. Yeah. I mean, and, and they're going to come back. Well, they they come only last year to do part of it. Yes. Uh, but there's still some like seventy five thousand oh. uh, dollars that that they got. Uh, that they need so to that, uh, approximate bids and you know, all this kind of stuff that they could, yes. could do. Uh, so you know, we'll see. Sure. Uh, but. You know, with the amount of money we have right now, it, that would just about wipe us out. Yeah, because the thing is, you've had, there was a little accumulation there before we started spending it. From, from, from the years that we started. Uh, well, we've been dipping into that pretty Yeah, pretty, you've been, well. yeah. I mean, but the income now is not building up any surplus no, like no, that. No, no, not much at all. No, uh, no. And there's some that we really can't can't touch. For instance, housing. Uh, there's yeah, there's a certain percentage that, of the. Very few things that uh, our town 
yeah. could uh, qualify for the housing part of it. So it's, it's sitting there, but we can't do anything yeah. with it. I think we've had one project that had to do with housing a while ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but open space, I mean, there's going to be some, some things coming, coming out. I'm, I'm sure that people are going to be looking for money, for instance, when this Shell Bridge uh, comes to fruition, uh, there's, you know, they're going to want to put parks and, and stuff on. Uh, so there's going to be some, I'm sure, requests uh, coming up there. And yeah. They'll be substantial. Um, and we're hoping that we'll have money to uh, fund those. Mm -hmm. But it's, so we are going to go to, uh, to the townspeople and hope that we can get uh, it raised to 1% okay. and not be the only town in the state of Massachusetts at this point. Are we the only one left now? <laughs> we, we've been the only one for a long time. Oh, oh. okay. Uh, so uh, we'll see. But yes, right. we are going to have a warrant over that. Yes. To the okay. uh, side of war too, because of, especially with the new federal taxes with SALT, with the uh, state and local taxes, yeah. If uh, when it's that starts hitting the taxpayers down the road, uh, it's a good appropriate time now to try for it because when it starts having an effect on the taxpayers here in our community, maybe in the next several years, it won't be as probably as well received as probably right now. This is an opportunity to make that you know uh, attempt to raise it from the 0.5 you know 0.0 uh, to one percent and all of that before it becomes not something that you'll be able to really push the townspeople for. I think well, it's the, this is the right time for it. I've, I've had people come up to me and, uh, and say, I mean, we'd love to have it go up. Uh, not love to have it go up, and I mean, we would support going up. Mm -hmm. And we've had other people saying, well, with the town's uh, taxes going up so much, the rate going up so much, uh, maybe you shouldn't be thinking about that. Uh -huh. Although, they think it's worthwhile, so. Yeah. Um, so we're going we're gonna to go for it. The only way to do it is put it to the test, put it to the voters and see how you come out. Then, yeah. And of course we have to get through this committee. <laughs> <I never. laughs> yeah, that's true too. Okay. You know my, my vote's going to be, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can tell you right now. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. It all depends how much, mm -hmm. well, that wouldn't be costly to, to us as a town. It would be generating income. Well, it, it has to. Yes. Well, yeah. you could still bring it forward if it had a negative recommendation. Yeah, that'd, be, that'd be probably cool. But, uh, I might have to leave the table to go on that note. <laughs> <laughs> I just have uh, one question because of uh, what's going on. Have you received any correspondence, Mr. Morales, from the uh, school committee or their budget committee about their request to... Not as of yet. It's in the paper today. Yeah. yeah so so today. I'm just asking, so the select board is meeting tomorrow, correct? Right. Now, are they meeting next week or the week after? Two weeks. Two weeks. So that means their request won't be before them at the earliest two weeks from tomorrow. If they do put forward a request to, to, to delay, you know, they're going to ask for uh, the select board to approve a delay uh, or their budget meeting from February to March. Yeah, it's, so, I take it to mean well, they have to have a public hearing. They, they'll do their work in their budget subcommittee. Then they have to have a public hearing yeah. by law. And what they've done in the last couple of years when I've been there is immediately, right there mm -hmm. in that room, uh, they have a school committee meeting and vote what they're going to uh, have for a budget. But they're going to have to request then, a then delay the thing to the is, select board, don't they, from each community to their to the regional agreement? They're going to have to request a delay because they're not going to meet the regional uh, agreement's requirements for them to have a budget meeting. They may have to, but right now I'm not sure that they're going to have a delay because as Lois stated, they may during that proceeding decide to go ahead and vote. And as Debbie pointed out today, we were talking, she said that, remember, the thing is, it's the assessments that we have to be concerned with. Yeah. And of course, they are derived from the budget. But those are, they vote the budget that night. That isn't going to give us the assessments even then, you mm -hmm. see. That takes, how long, Debbie? A couple weeks? 
it seems to me that I remember in the past, the following month they would set the assessments. But that's just past practice, so. So that's kind of the thing we need to look out for, how fast they move. Yeah, I'm just concerned, we, you know, because yes. we move all our department heads, we come forward to us with their budgets, mm -hmm. and then we have a long delay till we see what comes forward from the school department, you know. Well, school are you to your town, generally when would they submit the assessment to? North. March? I'm remembering it being in March. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So this doesn't sound too different to me to say that, but you're right. We need we can't make a decision on any budgets until that's why we don't tell anybody what oh yeah, we like your budget, it's okay. We mm -hmm. can't do that. As I say, we have to put the whole pie together and yeah. see how much money we have to allocate. And the school is a big part of that, mm -hmm. school budget is. So, uh, yeah, it holds us up, you're right. Uh, we'll probably be meeting more frequently in March, mm -hmm. probably. Uh, there's still a lot of budgets that haven't come in, a lot, I say, uh, some budgets that have not come in. And I've put uh, follow-ups in their mailboxes down here, but, uh, hasn't generated the results and looking for the Ag Commission. Oh, the AgCom and the Conscom. She just scanned them today, so. Oh, okay, so those will be coming, all right. That's one coming in then. Um, I didn't look through yours. You have the building commissioner in with yours? I don't have the building commissioner. Okay. He's, he has his own budget sheet, but he, usually never turns it in lately. All right. He's under the sweat board. Jim, we're coming for you. Give us the budget sheet. Yeah, there's, there's some that, that, you know, like mine, I do my own. Yes. Yeah. Even though I'm under the slack board. Right, right. And they have their own sheets, rather that it be part of the slack board sheet, but they okay. don't. So we didn't but they, put it in through you, though, so no, that's all right. So, um, all right, we need that one. Uh, Conservation Commission has not submitted. Well, I just said, I just said that's that's with the AgCom yeah, one. Okay, okay those two. Yeah. Okay. Um, we just said that. Dog officer, did he submit his through you? No. Nothing from there. Did you take um, a note over there? Yeah. <laughs> well, I know all the budgets that you guys have. Yeah. Um, emergency management, fire department. Oh, um, of course the COG depends on their meetings and when they set their budget. So, uh, Board of Health. Now, when the chair of the assessors was here a couple of weeks ago, he said he was mm. going to have the Board of Health one, didn't he? Mm -hmm. I haven't seen it yet. Okay. Um, This one I did Planning board is another one. A big one that we have. I haven't seen. Uh -huh. PBRS, of course. The rec commission. Nothing yet. Oh, the rec commission finally did uh, uh, give us a member on the. Uh, did they? Uh, oh, good. On the community yeah, preservation commission. Good. Uh, I don't know if they've made it official by um, getting a letter to the town clerk so that uh, yeah. they're telling that this could be uh, that they get them um, uh, appointed Good. as a representative. Good, because uh, you've been waiting a while for somebody yeah, from there. <laughs> yeah, in years. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we have somebody who was uh, eager to do that. Great. And so I'm really pleased with that. Good. Um, I just, they got to make sure they put something into the town, uh, town clerk. Yes. So yeah. they get sworn in. They, yeah, nominated them, and then she, the person gets sworn in. Okay, that's good. Uh, two weeks, we meet next on February 5th. Okay. Yeah. And February 5th and February 26th. Oh, right. there's no meeting next week? No. 
Oh, okay. No. Uh, sorry. Well, <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> That's why I say we two meetings in January, two in February, but we're very likely, I think I mentioned one time, very likely to have, we may meet every Monday in uh, March, maybe not. Uh, we'll see what we can do about getting these other budgets. But for the next meeting on February 5th, the select board budget will, will be going over with Willie, and I believe the select board members will be attending. And I had communication today from the tech school offering to come and meet with the finance committees of their 19 towns in the district. And I called right away this morning and they will come in the same night as the select board budget, the fifth. They'll follow. I'm uh, allocating an hour for the select board one. I don't know if it'll take that long. I don't think it will. Probably not. And then they'll come in after that. And what we'll use as a filler in between, like Debbie's, I'm not going to do tonight. Dan's budget will go over sometime. I'll put them on the agenda so that we can, if there's a little gap in time, we'll do that. But uh, it'll be the superintendent and the business manager, Martin, Mr. Martin, and Russ Kalbrush. If you remember last year, they did a nice presentation. Yeah, very, very, very professional yeah. type thing. So there's one of the schools that we'll have. Yeah, the they did an excellent job last year. Yes, yeah. so I thought we'd like to have them back this year too. So. All right, does anybody have any other business? Did you do the minutes? Hmm? Yeah, we did. You didn't yeah, sign them. I, did. I need to sign them, you're right. Okay, Willie, did you have anything you wanted to say? No, nope. thank you for asking, thanks for having me. I'm getting used to doing this with you guys. Okay, um, this is the minutes. Approved on today's the 20th. So somebody's supposed to make a motion? They did make a motion to approve these minutes. Oh, no, no, no. To oh, adjourn, adjourn. Oh, are you in a rush to leave? That yeah, you must be. Aren't you going to oh. wait while I sign this? Well, you, we'll you, you almost got it signed. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I'm fine, that's fine. Oh, You're okay. going to take care of delivering that? Yeah. yeah okay. Make a motion, that we motion to be made, seconded? Second. To adjourn. Anybody object? None whatsoever. All right. In favor.